Hi Year 11, this video is going over your answers to your cue cards. So let's gun this, let's hit all of them. This is a good subject base to help you with your graphic organizer, by the way. So make sure you go over it. So first of all, what is excretion? It's the removal of metabolic waste made by cells. Don't confuse it with egestion, not the same thing, okay? So specifically removal of things like urea. Question number two, where is urea made? Liver. Question number three, what is deamination? It is the process through which an amine group is removed from a protein. Um, so it will basically result in that removal. Um, where does deamination happen? Question four, um, in the liver. Okay, there you go again. Question number five, uh, where, what is the renal artery? It's a blood vessel that carries blood from the aorta into the kidney. Okay. What is the cortex? It's the region of the kidney that is going to be where you're going to find things like the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Since it's the upper part of the kidney, it's a site of filtration um, mainly. Um, you might have your proximal convoluted tube will also be found there, so you do have some reabsorption in the cortex as well. What is a medulla? It's the lower part of the kidney. It's where you're going to find things like the loop of Henle. Um, you're also going to have the collecting duct running down there, so it's a site of reabsorption again. Question number eight, what is a glomerulus? A glomerulus is a network of blood vessels that allows for the filtration of blood into filtrate, so into the Bowman's capsule. Question number nine, what is a Bowman's capsule? So it's a C-shaped capsule that receives filtrate from the glomerulus, so that's filtered blood, um, things like water, urea, salts, glucose, amino acids, anything smaller than a protein. Okay, so it's just site of filtration. Question 10, what happens in the proximal convoluted tubule? The reabsorption of glucose, of amino acids, happening by active transport. Question 11, why does urea need to be excreted? It's a metabolic waste and high levels it will cause issues for various life processes and cells. Give three functions, question 12, give three functions of the kidney. Number one, controlling the amount of water content in the blood, that's osmoregulation. Number two, controlling the amount of salts in the blood. Number three, um, removal of wastes from the um, blood, such as urea. Um, number four, the reabsorption of critical materials such as glucose and amino acids. There are more. Question 13, what does the nephron do? It's the functional unit of the kidney, it's the site of filtration, it's the site of reabsorption. Question 14, what happens in the loop of Henle? In the loop of Henle, you will have reabsorption of water um, and reabsorption of salts. Question 15, what happens in the collecting duct? Reabsorption of water. Question 16, what is an aquaporin? It's a channel in the collecting duct through which water is reabsorbed. It's affected by ADH. High levels of ADH are broadly going to cause the aquaporin um, to open up a bit more. Question 17, what is ADH? It's a hormone that affects the reabsorption of water in the kidney. It's called antidiuretic hormone. All right, question 18 and 19, here's a diagram, it's gonna help you here, okay? So, when we are looking at a straightforward question, and our straightforward question is, boom. Um, what happens to ADH when water content in the blood is low? Look at the diagram, okay? So, when we have a low water content in the blood, what's going to happen, okay, because we're dehydrated, we'll have an increase in ADH. That will mean that more water will be reabsorbed. That will create a concentrated urine. Let's look at the other side of that. If the body has is hydrated, there will be less ADH being produced. That will mean that less water is absorbed and you will be getting a dilute urine. So that's question 18 and 19 with the power of a wonderful diagram. Okay, get that clear. That's kind of important. Okay, uh, where are we up to? We've done 18, we've done 19, 20. What happens to urine color when you are dehydrated? It kind of gets darker. It goes a kind of darkish brown eventually. Question 21, what is the effect of heavy sweating on urine volume? If you sweat heavily, you're going to lose water content in the blood. The consequence of that is that there'll be more reabsorption in the kidney, um, and that will mean that the urine volume will decrease, it'll get less. What is a ureter? It's a tube that connects a kidney to a bladder. What is a bladder? Bladder is a muscular bag that stores urine prior to being removed from the body. Okay. What is the urethra? It's the tube connecting the bladder to the outside of the body. Where does ultrafiltration happen? 
Glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. 26. What part of the kidney does ADH act on? The collecting duck. What type of scenario would lead to you to produce brown urine? Heavy exercise on a hot day um, would result in a really heavy amount of reabsorption of water, producing a low volume of water that was highly concentrated in terms of things like diarrhea. What type of scenario would lead to you produce a clear pale urine? Um, Overconsumption of water, overhydrating. So perhaps getting your hydration wrong at half time in a sports game, drinking far more than you actually needed to, um, resulting in not, um, a very, very, very little reabsorption happening, a large um, urine output, and a very, very, very low concentration of urea in the actual urine itself. 29. Where is salt reabsorbed? Loop of Henley, a little bit in the collecting duct, a little bit in the diastole convoluted tubule. Question 30. Why are blood cells not found in urine? They are too big. They cannot fit through the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Okay? Doesn't mean it doesn't happen occasionally, but if it does, it's a sign that something is going badly wrong in the kidney, and you go and see a doctor now if you have red blood in your urine. Okay? All good. There's your questions and your answers.